It's crunch time for East Timor. Foreign aid is rapidly drying up, and next month the UN will finally withdraw its security forces. President Shanana Guzmao knows better than most the crisis East Timor will soon be facing. For Guzmao, this school in the hills above Dili is just one corner of the looming problem. There'll be barely enough to pay the teachers and virtually nothing to fix the still ruined classrooms. There's a new bitterness here. The dream that East Timor's natural resources would rescue the country as the aid disappeared is rapidly fading. While various deals have been signed with Australia regarding the oil fields that lie between the two countries, Shanana has publicly barely uttered a critical word. Until very recently, his Prime Minister has presented those deals to the public as not ideal, but at least reasonable. Shanana's venom on this day, a couple of weeks ago, was a bolt out of the blue. For many of the activists here, the Australians have always been plotting to steal East Timor's oil. The dramatic difference now is that their president and prime minister are joining in the chorus. Australia is cheating. The Timor Sea Treaty, signed between Australia and the new East Timorese government in 2002, was condemned at the time by many of the organisers here. The treaty seen as selling out East Timor's full maritime boundaries for a short-sighted gain. Although not said today, those deals were negotiated by Prime Minister Mari Alkatiri. Um, was that, uh, in retrospect, was that a mistake? Uh, yeah, because this is a temporary agreement. This is, that's, that's why we, uh, we can sign it before the maritime boundaries. But what, what this, uh, this, this, this only uh, was a, a <coughs> clear show of goodwill and good faith from our side. Do you believe that good faith has not been uh, returned? Was it your expectation that Australia would have progressed on these other fronts? I think we're still in the beginning, in the very starting points in negotiations. Uh, we, we still have uh, some one, two years, three years to, to go. And I still believe that uh, Australia will realise that there's no way then to, to, uh, to submit to the rule of law. Sorting out a maritime boundary between the two nations was never going to be easy or fast. In 1972, Australia settled on a sea border with Indonesia. Portugal, which then controlled East Timor, was not a party, and hence the so-called Timor Gap in the border. After the Indonesian invasion, Australia and Indonesia agreed not on formal borders, but on a joint exploitation zone, splitting profits 50-50. After independence, it was essentially this zone that Australia and East Timor negotiated over. It was agreed that 90% of oil profits would go to East Timor, still without defining any maritime border over an area much less than what East Timor claims is its rightful territory.
Australia retained its oil field west of the joint development zone and most of its sunrise field to the east, 80% of it. It was a bad deal. It was a bad deal because... Mario Carrascalau is a senior opposition figure who opposed East Timor signing the treaty. Demonstrate against the government, second against the parliament, and then in the third place against Australia. The government of East Timor did demonstrate against the... Oh, yes, yeah. Because why? Because it was their deal. That because they are the one who brought this to... They signed the, the agreement and then brought this to the parliament, and the parliament ratified it, hmm. and then now... But why should we be in Australia? Oh, it is my mistake. So, in your opinion, the, the issue of the maritime boundary should have been settled uh, before there was any discussion about sharing the uh, oil resources? No doubt about that. And I also am also aware, aware that it is not so difficult because uh, but to, in order to have a good neighbourship uh, with uh, any other country here in the region, you have to take and give, you know. Everybody has to realise that, that you cannot just forced to your position to be accepted by other sides. So I believe that we can reach a, a better agreement, a fair agreement to, to both sides. Whether it was a good deal or a bad deal, it was certainly Mari Alcatiri's deal. And for the Australian negotiators at this week's Maritime Boundary Talks, it's a deal the Prime Minister is now trying to get out of. The dollars have started to flow to East Timor from the joint development area. But a second agreement, covering Australia's principal area of interest, Greater Sunrise, signed by al Qatiri last year, has not been presented to his parliament for ratification. A frustrating blockage for Australia, which has already begun negotiating with companies to develop the field. Is this why the relationship has uh, deteriorated quite recently, because Australia is issuing licences for, uh, for Greater Sunrise? I hope that the, what, uh, the deterioration is only between uh, the Prime Minister Mario Katiri and, and the government of Australia, not between the two people. Well, I'm sure it's not, but uh, as yeah. a, <laughs> uh, both, both people have interests uh, in, in what the boundaries are, both people yeah. have interests in, in the proceeds of these, uh, of these fields. At that meeting in November 2002, um, you, Mr. Dow, did put very firmly that, as far as he was concerned, there was an agreement on Greater Sunrise. Yeah. You appear to agree with that, although you were very firm on on, uh, on the agreement. Is there. You said you're, you're not wanting to change the TMLC agreement. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to question no, the no, 80 20 um, split on uh, Greater Sunrise. Pending, you, pending to? Pending maritime boundaries yeah. discussions. But it's unlikely there'll be any agreements coming out of this week's maritime boundary discussions. At El Qatiri's side is Peter Galbraith, his constant advisor through four years of oil and border negotiations. Their strategy has been a high risk one, do the best deal possible on the joint development area and leave the bigger fight over borders and richer oil fields until later in an international court if necessary. Is that part of the strategy to, 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 to get enough asset then to, 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 to play a tough hand later? Absolutely. The idea was to pocket as much of the revenues as possible uh, and therefore to leave East Timor in a position where it had a stronger hand uh, for future negotiations about areas outside the JPDA, uh, Buffalo, Cor uh, Corlina, and Laminaria on the west, and Sunrise on the east. Galbraith's and El Qatiri's strategy of dealing with broader boundaries later took a turn for the worse when Australia withdrew itself from the jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice. The fact is, you never uh, withdraw from the jurisdiction of a court unless you think your case is weak. Would you have ever anticipated that Australia would withdraw from the um, International uh, uh, Court of Justice uh, jurisdiction? Uh, the, the Australians, uh, uh, from time to time in the negotiations under the Timor Sea Treaty, said that they might do so. Uh, frankly, I didn't believe it because I had an image of Australia as uh, one of those countries, like the Scandinavian countries, that was very law-abiding, believing in the United Nations, a, a, ki a, a kind of good government country in the world. And, and I, I thought what they did was completely out of character. 
Relationships here have soured dramatically in recent months and will probably only get worse today as Alcateri announces that East Timor will legally challenge any company that deals with Australia in the Greater Sunrise Field. Any response? Imagine there's much room for discussion uh, after that. Uh, after that speech, the room is too big. <laughs> too big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a stunned, a stunned silence. Do you imagine there'll be much of a discussion now? Yeah, but I, uh, I think that it is better to be transparent, to be clear, to be uh, straightforward, and uh, this is the only way to, to convince the other side that we are here uh, to, to negotiate, but in, a, in good faith. Is this a new stage in the uh, in the discussions? To be so uh, so frank, so forward, uh, so. This is my this is my style. Okay. <laughs> well, now that Australia has withdrawn from the um, International Court of Justice, what strategy do you have, what leverage do you have to persuade Australia to make any changes whatsoever to the uh, current agreement? Of course, as, uh, as uh, leading figure in all these negotiations from the Timor side, I still am. I have my strategy, but uh, unfortunately I cannot disclose it. <laughs> Politics in East Timor is almost a one-party affair. Alcateri's Fretland enjoy an overwhelming majority, and opposition voices can be lonely ones. <laughs> debate on the maritime boundaries and the previous treaties that have been signed has become even more complicated by a bribery scandal that broke in March. In a statement of claim filed in the US, Oceanic Explorations, which believes it holds an old title to the Timor Sea, claims that Alcateri received two and a half million dollars from ConocoPhillips to secure leases in the joint development area agreed to by East Timor and Australia. Conoco Phillips and Alcateri both regard the allegations as baseless. Well, these negotiations are now entering uh, the most important stage for you, being the, uh, the maritime boundaries, but it's been somewhat overshadowed by another controversy, which is uh, the, another oil company has accused you of uh, accepting uh, bribes uh, by implication being influenced to sign these papers. I made a real way to uh, clear my position. I denied everything, and I'm. Um, what the, I am in the position not to challenge them to, 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 give, to come with facts. Uh, unfortunately, I, will, I will was not presented as a defendant in the, in, the, in the court. Very unfortunate. I would prefer them to accuse me and put me in the place of a defendant too. It is very unfortunate, but it, is, uh, 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 it was made uh, intentionally. Their lawyer made it intentional through allegation based on uh, American laws mm. that I cannot, I can't do too much to to to, to counter uh, attack them. Uh, but I've been trying to to uh, I've been watching them through my lawyers uh, to get some proper one opportunity, uh, a better opportunity to react. But now I'm challenging them publicly to get to come with facts and try to, try to accuse me in, uh, in the court or everywhere. The Oceanic claim is not convincing in itself, but it does provide some detail. It gives the names of two bank branches in Darwin and bank account numbers through which they claim the money was paid. It's a terrible slander. Yeah. The terrible slander is not true, but there, are, there is a reasonable amount of information in the allegations, bank accounts, uh, bank account details, payment details, dates. Uh, when when you, you have a bank account, uh, you pay for your, uh, your kids at the school using checks or to our supermarket and going and using checks to pay, to pay something. Of course, the bank account is open. The numbers became open. Uh, but uh, those amounts of, of uh, money that you are really uh, talk about is completely false. Please come with the with facts. I know quite well how much money I had 
the maximum in this bagel car and never had more than a, a few a few thousand, very few thousand. Mario Carascolau's son works for Petro Timor, a subsidiary of Oceanic, but Carascolau says there's no family interest in either company. He knows nothing of the charges, but believes the allegations have affected the government's recent behaviour. When did this uh, this talk about Australia being a thief and Australia stealing? When did when did this start? Uh, it is just uh, perhaps about one month ago, about one month ago, I can start to see in the papers a statement made by Dr. Maria Katiri saying them, that, saying that, and, uh, but they didn't say they are Australian, they say that uh, yeah, the Australian government, uh, the Australian government, they always mention the Australian government, because some people, even Maria Katiri and uh, Shannon Guzman, they try to make a difference between the Australian government and, uh, and the Australian people, they used to make the statement. But this was about one month ago or something like that. It's, quite, it's quite recent that this It's quite is... recent, uh, during more, almost two years, you know, they always uh, consider us the position as the one who tried to sabotage everything here in East Timor, you know, by voting against this also, because the country needs money, the country needs money. So why is it starting now? Why is this, uh, this kind of quite aggressive talk about Australia starting now? Has, has anything changed? I mean, what's... Uh... I do not know what, re what, re what really happened, but uh, uh, if you... Be, even because the allegation that it has been some bribes in his team after that, so... Uh, this demonstration perhaps could also, it is a, a way also to deviate uh, say, the attention of the people, but I, know, I don't know exactly, but uh, something must be behind that, and uh, everybody, everybody knows that uh, the credibility of this government, is, the government is losing its credibility. Last meeting with the donor country, CNS team, there was also some, some problems, and we, we realized that. And uh, so perhaps they want uh, the, to, to, to show that uh, they are they're caring, they are taking care of uh, the, the future of, of the people. Perhaps this is to create a new face, a new image, who knows, I don't know. Or a new enemy. A new enemy. The Oceanic claim also makes an explosive accusation about the Australian Embassy in East Timor. They claim that payments to many Timorese politicians were made inside the Australian Embassy in Dili to relinquish their oil rights. The Australian Department of Foreign Affairs categorically denies the claim. The allegation concerning the Australian Embassy did not include al Qatiri at all, but it did include other Fretland parliamentary members. One of the accusations in those court documents is that the Australian Embassy was involved in handing yeah. over... Do you believe? Well, it's not for me. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's not that it sounds credible. There's a, yeah, there's yeah, a person, this is the point. This is an individual point. name from the Australian yeah, Embassy. Yeah, this is the point. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It is a scandal of massive proportions, and, and that one in particular... Lots for 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 have you asked the Australian government for their response to those allegations? Have you asked them, them for any information regarding those claims? Uh, no, not at all, because I did believe. Because if they were uh, really able to, 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 to say that I have, yes, I have received a bribe of an uh, amount of 2.5 million... No, I'm leaving that on the side. No, no, but it's the same, no, it's the same, okay. it's the same, it's the same line. Okay. And I know clearly that it's, it's not true, it's false. It's frivolous. Uh, why can, uh, could I believe on another, other, other kind of allegations? Oil, like it seems to everywhere, is building clouds of suspicion and mistrust. With billions of dollars at stake, these new strains between Australia and East Timor aren't likely to be getting any better anytime soon. Yeah.